I really want tacos, but I really want takoyaki. There has to be a solution. And that solution is pork butt, or pork shoulder in this case, but we're gonna have to braise this. And to braise this, we're gonna be using about three tablespoons worth of chili powder, one tablespoon worth of dry granulated garlic, one tablespoon worth of onion powder, just a dash of cinnamon, you don't need too much of this because it can be very strong, one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of dried oregano, that's super important, and one tablespoon worth of coriander. You can use crushed coriander for that, but I just like the whole stuff. Hit this with a bunch of black pepper or just however much you want, and about two tablespoons worth of salt, just to make sure it has a decent enough salt content. Stir this up with your utensil of choice, and my utensil of choice is my finger, and now we actually have to get this totally coated with all of our spice rub. Probably want to use a bigger plate or pan for this, but you just want to make sure that all of the pork is totally covered in your spice rub. That's super important. Now we're going to go ahead and start braising this, but before we actually braise it, we're going to go ahead and sear it off in a really deep cast iron or Dutch oven pan. If you don't have something like this, feel free to just use a nice saute pan and then transfer it to another pan later when we throw it in the oven. We're also going to use a little bit of mirepoix for this, and for this we're just going to be using about one onion, three limes, and we are going to be juicing these, don't, don't worry. Give them a little bit of a roll to help with the juicing process, and after after that, just juice them like normal into whatever measuring cup you have. Alternatively, you can just use a pre-bought lime juice, but that's just not as good. And then finally, use your beer of choice. I am using an Asahi, but you can use any Mexican lager that you would like, like Corona or Pacifico. Now we actually have to sear this bad boy, and you want to start off just on a low medium heat, just enough to start getting everything nice and sizzling, and just dump the rest of the spices right on top. We're going to sizzle this and sear it for about three to four minutes until you get some really beautiful color on there. After you get color on one side, go ahead and rotate it, sear the other side, and then continue to sear all of the sides of the pork. This is really important. I don't want to have uncooked spices and unseared sides of my pork. After you have all that beautiful color, now we're gonna add in the rest of our stuff. We're gonna use a couple of bay leaves, our entire onion, and then finally, the asahi. I mean, hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go, that's better. You always have to do that before you add your beer to anything you're cooking, right? Go ahead and dump your beer right on top of everything and just make sure it does have some decent coverage and then top it off with that lime juice that we squeezed earlier. Make sure you agitate it just a little bit so you make sure that all the liquid actually goes underneath it as well. Once it starts simmering, throw a lid on it, let it simmer for a couple of minutes, and then we're going to bake this in the oven at 325 degrees for about 5 to 6 hours until it is 100% tender. You can, you can do whatever you want after that. Now after those 5 to 6 hours and with some YouTube magic, we can finally pull this out of the oven. Now I actually had this sitting in the oven for about an hour longer than I needed to at 200 degrees Fahrenheit just because I wasn't ready for it. But now we have this beautiful beautiful pork like look at this you give it a good forking and it's just it just instantly falls apart that's really what you're looking for sometimes you might need more time than the five to six hours and just let it go slow and low now we're going to remove the pork butt into whatever vessel you have i'm just using a large bowl here but I also wanna make sure I strain out all of those onions. Keep the liquid off to the side. For now, we are gonna introduce some of that back in. Take a couple of forks and start pulling this apart. This should be really easy to do. We're gonna start off with about a half a cup worth of our liquid, just to introduce some of that liquid back into the pork. This is gonna keep it super moist. Continue to do this until all of your pork is totally shredded. This is going to make it super tender and super juicy later. Now we actually have to make the takoyaki batter, and for this we're going to be using about one cup worth of all-purpose flour, a pinch of salt, two teaspoons worth of baking powder, two whole eggs into this, one and a half cups worth of water, a little pinch of black pepper, and then a secret ingredient, some tahini. This is just kind of a chili spice that I grew up with and I really, really love it, but feel free to use whatever spices you want because, you know, you do you. Give this a nice whisk just to make sure it's totally incorporated, all of that flour is completely broken down, and just set this to the side for a few minutes, we're not going to need it right now. And so now to top off our taco yakis, we're gonna need a little bit of pico de gallo. You can make your pico de gallo however you want. I'm gonna keep mine not spicy and kind of neutral just to see how I can play with spice later. But for this pico, we're gonna be using just one whole heirloom tomato. This heirloom tomato comes out to about a cup and a half worth of diced tomatoes. And we're also gonna hit this with about a half a bunch of cilantro or about a half a cup of chopped cilantro if you wanna measure that out. Throw in about 75% of that into your bowl with your pico de gallo and then save some of it for topping the taco yaki later. Now I do like lemon juice in my pico de gallo but feel free to use lime juice if you already have it and we're just going to squeeze in one whole lemon into this pico the last bit is adding in just a little bit of fresh onion you can use red or white i like the white sweet onion with my pico de gallo so i'm going to use that instead 
You want a really small dice or something close to a brunoise for this, just so that way there isn't huge chunks of onion. Season this with salt and black pepper, give it a nice toss just to make sure everything's playing really nicely, and then finish it with a little bit of cumin, garlic powder, whatever you really want at this point. You can also throw in some fresh chilies. Now, corn has also been really, really nice right now, so we're also gonna char some really nice sweet corn. To do this, just peel everything back, and then if you have a gas range, just throw it on top of the gas range. It'll be totally fine. If not, you can shuck the corn ahead of time and then saute it in your saute pan at a very high heat just to get some charring on it. After you get it nice and charred, go ahead and remove this from the cob. And remember, you can save those cobs to make a really nice corn stock for later. Pop this into your bowl, and this is gonna be one of our garnishes if you can stop, stop eating it. We need that, dude, stop eating it. And now one final thing to just top everything off is gonna be a little bit of a lime sour cream. I actually love using this for tacos and for nachos and whatever the case is, but all it is is a little bit of nice whole fat sour cream mixed with about a half a lime just to get it liquidy enough to put on top of your stuff. And that's about it. It's delicious. You can't go wrong. And so now the next part you can't really do without a takoyaki pan. So if you want a takoyaki pan, check out the links in the description to pick one up from Amazon. Go ahead and grease this guy up and make sure it's over a low medium heat. And we're gonna gently pour in some of our batter into just one little crevice with a little bit of pork just to test out the temperature. I have failed these before in a very spectacular fashion. So I'm gonna take my time and just make sure my heat is right for this. After you can kind of move your little takoyaki ball around with that pulled pork in there, and it kind of looks like a little, little alien head, I guess at this point, this is ready to go. Now we can do our happy dance and make a full set of our takoyaki. Pour in your batter just to about three quarters of the way at first because once we start adding our pork, this will overflow. And don't, don't worry about this too much. This is kind of how you make takoyaki. But we're also gonna add in a little bit of cilantro just to give it that fresh little pop. Now you kind of have to separate your takoyaki from each other. And to do this, you wanna make sure again, pay attention to the heat because the heat will be your number one enemy when making these. As you kind of play with them just a little bit, you're gonna be able to slowly start turning them. Once you can turn each one about 90 degrees, you can go ahead and start adding in just a little bit more batter to fill out any of those crevices in your takoyaki balls. Continue to keep playing with your taco yucky balls. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it until everything rolls around really freely and hit it with just a touch more oil here and there before finishing these off. So they get nice and G bad. Once they're nice and G bad after about six to seven minutes, we're going to plate these up on a little bit of cabbage and take the extras that you have and just place them on a cooling rack. And you can reheat these later in the oven. Now assemble the seven dragon balls right into the middle. Yeah, I thought it was cool. Okay. I wanted dragon balls. What? Hit this with a little bit of lime sour cream first, just so you get some of that good good on there. Hit it with a little bit of pico de gallo next because you want these layers, trust me. Then finally, a little bit of our fresh charred corn, a little more lime sour cream. Finally, hit it with some fresh cilantro and bam, we finally have some really interesting taco yaki and taco, T-A-C-O, yaki. These are, I don't know. I don't know what we just did here. I'm not quite sure what I should eat these with, so I'm just gonna go with the chopsticks since they're already dirty, but I wanna get Everything all, oh my God, my mouth is watering. I wanna get some of the lime sour cream on there, some of the corn, <clears throat> some of the cilantro, just everything in one bite. This is a, that's a big bite though. Look at, look at that. Oh, cheers. We did it. It almost tastes like you're eating tacos. Mexican tacos, not Japanese tacos. The batter itself is incredibly neutral, but it just helps carry all of those other flavors. Oh God, so because technically you're eating takoyaki, but none of the flavors are Japanese. Does somebody want to start a food truck and run this? Just use this idea. I'll just come by. I'll just come by. It'll be fine. If you were to make your very own takoyaki, what would you make? My head just started spinning and running with ideas. And the first thing I thought of is maybe making like an Indian variety and throwing paneer in the middle and then topping it with whatever curry you want. Maybe serving it with some like toasted lentils or something on the top of it. Maybe a little bit of roti on the side. Like the options are honestly endless. So I want to see you guys make these. My name is Chef PK. Get subscribed. You remember, keep playing with your food. Because then you do weird, awesome flavor combinations like this. Look at uh, uh -huh. We're closed.